Hi, Jan here and welcome to my door cupboard tour. Um, starting off in the kitchen and this used to be my everything cupboard where all the things that you need to hand and various bits and pieces were kept but I found that things were migrating to the back of the cupboard. It's quite, it's like 60 centimetres deep and things get to the back of the cupboard never to be seen again so I've decided to whip all of those out and this is now prepper cupboard and so um, starting at the very bottom down here I just put them on these because it's easier to pull out I've just got some odds and ends from Mexicans that need using up this is mainly the using up section down here I've got some tahini and some I think they're jars of roasted peppers and things and then a couple of stirring sauces and some dried onions. These have all got to find a new home, but they're okay there for the moment. We got baked beans, which go back as far as the eye can see, and then tomatoes. Now they're both things that I thought I had more than I would ever need, but I found it um, during lockdown, we actually went through quite a lot of those, a lot more than I actually thought that we would normally use. So um, I've beefed up those supplies a little bit. And then I've got a, a tray of various different, um, what's that, couscous and uh, sauces, I think. I think the only way to, to use cupboard, if it's a deep cupboard, cupboard space is to have something that actually pulls out so you can see what's in there. Then on the top shelf we've got uh, two rows of peanut butter, again going back as far as the eye can see. Uh, we've got the uh, smooth one is on the left with the blue lids, that's the one I prefer. And then Neil likes the crunchy one. We've not tried the we normally have the, you can see the red lid and the blue lid. They're the Sainsbury's own, which we really like. But we haven't tried the Hubbards yet, so we just got a couple of those just to to see how it is. And uh, all of the peanut butters, I always check that they're safe for dogs. So that if, if we need to give them a tablet or something, or if I'm bathing the dogs and having a bit of a trouble getting them to stand still and not get bored, and not jump out of the bath then sometimes I smear peanut butter on the wall tiles and then they'll stand there quite nicely while I'm shampooing them <laughs> and they're licking away at the at the wall tiles and then of course I clean it off properly afterwards but it's normally pretty clean by the end then I've got a, a row of um, jams and preserves there's a lemon curd in the front then various different jams there's some black lids on some of them so you can't really see it very well and then I've got several rows of um, sauces, um, mainly pasta sauces, tomato-based pasta sauces. And I think there's a, a creamy mushroom sauce and a couple of shallwoods. And then we get on to the mayonnaise section. That's another of the items that just kind of disappeared during lockdown. Um, I suppose during that hot summer when People were having, um, when I say people, I'm talking about my husband, husband and my son mainly. They were having a lot of uh, tuna pasta mayo, that type of things. And they were getting through mayo like it was going out of out of style. And then just above the cupboard on the work surface, I, I buy my Worcester sauce in the big catering four litre size. So that's at the moment waiting for me to find it a new home. It won't live up there. I've got some pasta that I picked up. Um, in Sainsbury's yesterday that's not yet been put away so that's three kilos each of the penne the foosley and is it foosley and uh, spaghetti and then I've got another tray of um, sauces I think they're sauces I think I think there's some blancmanges then yeah chocolate blancmange Oh, my bread bin needs a really good scrub, doesn't it? And the tail end of a big catering size pack of powdered potato, potato, you know, smash type of thing. So that's what I've got kept in the kitchen. Storeroom size. Oh. There's a little echo in, in the bed there. 
and then on top of the kennel I've got large bags of dog food at the back here we've got 18 two 18 kilogram bags of Harrington's I get those on on the um, subscribe and save from Amazon and I've got um, more of those arriving on Saturday and then in front of those I've picked up a couple of bags of the it's the Sainsbury's own brand worker I'll turn the camera around so you can see because the worker dog food um, I don't think they charge tax on it so it's a lot lot cheaper and I've got a feeling it's just higher in protein than the ordinary dog food is. But I thought, well, I worry so much about not having food for them. I'd rather feed them the wrong food than no food at all. And I've got another two bags of worker dog food coming on Saturday again from Pets at Home. But it's their brand rather than the Sainsbury's brand. And then we come into the... Oh, look, there's Bear. into the cupboard where I keep most of the... Just putting some light on in here and we've got some uh, some tin dog food and some dog treats. Um, and then we've got more um, dog biscuits and I'll say dog treats, they're, they're actually the dentist stick type things. They're the Sainsbury's own version of dentist stick. So and some powdered milk i've not tried the nestle one yet we've we bought the i mean what size is that that's uh 1800 grams we bought that one but i've actually because we haven't tried it yet i've bought a smaller size that we can actually try to see if we like it before we uh get faced with a situation where we have to use it and then in this is my main prepper pantry, I suppose you call it. I get so envious of, of the people who have basements and just have so much space downstairs. Now, the first two things are I've just um, spent three days redoing all of the food um, storage. And so I've got these two baskets of things that I couldn't fit anywhere else. <laughs> and in my head, I'm calling them the lucky dip baskets at the moment. But they're literally just things that I can't fit on the shelves at the moment. And then um, I've got some some pasta from a, a three kilogram bag that got opened. And so they've just gone into tubs, which will eventually go back and live on the shelf in the kitchen. Down at the bottom, we've got three 10 kilogram bags of rice. That's basmati rice. I used to always get the Tilda one in the blue, but I've just moved over to this uh, Salam which is a lot cheaper but uh, we were in Sainsbury's yesterday and they didn't have any of that particular brand at all the shelf had been just stripped bare of it the uh, the two bags that you see the turquoisey bags just just here they're both Tilda rice that's a, an everyday rice rice I think they call it and they're that's two four kilogram bags but they were I think they were five pounds each was it five pound for the four kilogram bags Neil I think it was yes yeah and then this little shelving unit here I've got some tinned milks and things I've got coconut milk and condensed milk and evaporated milk some coconut oil um, there's some arborio with two boxes of risotto rice to the side there and then as, as we go down that, oh, that's a box of pasta gone, or a tub of pasta gone. Then uh, got various baking sugars, and then uh, further down, I've got some um, tinned fruit. I've got two whole sections full of porridge oats. It's the Sainsbury's own brand, which we really like. And that has to be my number one prepper food. Because the uh, the oats can be eaten hot or cold. They're, I think they're steamed before they're packed. So they're kind of pre-cooked. And then we cook them again when we, when we make them into porridge. But... 
as I say, they can be used in hot or cold, sweet or savoury. And they're, even though they're now, it's gone. I used to pay £1.12 a pack for a kilo and a half. It's now one ninety, so they've gone up quite considerably, but still quite reasonably priced. And a few months ago, I can't remember exactly how far back it was now, I thought, what would I do if, if we were really in that sort of situation where I, I just had to live on porridge? Would I be able to? Should I just get masses and masses of, of porridge oats and then, you know, that would be my kind of survival food. So just an experiment, because I occasionally do weird things for experiments. I thought I will eat nothing but porridge oats for a week and see if I can do it. So three meals a day for seven days, I ate porridge oats. And to be absolutely honest, I really enjoy porridge oats. I could have carried on. I stopped doing it because I thought it's not a nutritionally balanced diet. I, was, I wasn't hungry. It kept me going. It was calories, but I thought I'm better off going back onto a far more nutritionally balanced diet. But it's proved to me that I can do it and I could do it. Then above the oats, I've got two, two cubes of pasta there various different types of pasta um, and then we come into the protein section and I've got my my fish and uh, hot dog section there so I've got pilchards because they are still really cheap to buy really nutritious although having said that in Sainsbury's yesterday the pilchard section had been decimated. They had loads of tuna, loads of other fish, but the pilchards were just almost completely gone. So I don't know if other people have now cottoned on that it's a good thing to have in your stock, in your store cupboard. Then uh, I don't quite know what happened with the salmon. For months I was picking up a tin of salmon every time I went to the shops, but there's only that one tin left and everybody's denying eating it. So I don't know what happened to that. I haven't got a cat anymore, so it wasn't being fed to the cat. I've got tuna chunks uh, as it goes back there. Some, some of them in spring water. More recently, I've been picking up the ones in oil because I thought it's probably a bit more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Perhaps, perhaps better nutrition with to add a bit of oil to it. Then... Uh, the small tins are, are sardines, I think. Uh, yeah, small tins of sardines, which are... I was just thinking, are sardines Cornish pilchards or are pilchards Cornish sardines? Neil? Yeah? Did you hear that? Yeah, are pilchards... Are pilchards Cornish sardines or are sardines Cornish pilchards? I don't know. I can't remember now, but I'm sure that I've heard that somewhere. And I know in Cornwall the fishermen used to put people on lookout to watch for the shoals. They used to stand up on the cliffs and look for the shoals of fish. But yeah, makes sense. Uh, we'd need to look into that more before, before I give you more information on that. Um... Corn beef, again, I thought I had more corn beef than we would ever use. And then a couple of weeks ago, when I checked the corn beef stocks, that was again decimated. So I've had to, um, over the last couple of weeks, refill the corn beef. Still plentiful in the shops. Um, then we've got Spam, then we've got um, Ham. I had some on the shopping the other day that I was showing you, and I said we hadn't tried it yet. Since then, we've opened a tin. Um, I actually really liked it. What did you think, Neil? What was that? The, the, the ham out of the tin. Oh, I really liked it. It was a little bit salty, um, but not over, not overpoweringly salty. Um, well, I, I certainly had quite a lot of it, so, uh, yeah, I thought it was really nice. So I had it in a pick of bread and on some, um, uh, um, what's the cracker of wheat thing? Um, oh, Rivita. Oh, Rivita's. Right, I hope that you heard that because we're stood in a cupboard and Neil's in <laughs> at the desk in the lounge. So I hope that you heard what he was saying. Otherwise, that's a bit of a boring couple of minutes there. Then there's some more 
um, that's the Sainsbury's own version of of spam really but again it's not quite as good as the real thing but it's, it's perfectly palatable and then oh, I've got an echo here hello echo hello what are you doing in here hey it's all right I've got food for you but this isn't it then we get on to the dried pulses because as I say I found that during lockdown there were so many things that just got decimated and I thought nobody's ever going to go to the cupboard and think oh I fancy a dried kidney bean so I thought well if I stock up on that I know it's going to be there if we need it in the future so I've got various different um I've got um dal there green lentils I've got red lentils I've got red kidney beans various different bits and pieces going all the way back then down on the next shelf if Echo will let me get down uh, I've got my tea bags and Neil's coffee now I used to buy the same I'm trying to get this out to show you this is the the really big jar of Dow Egberts and I used to buy the Sainsbury's gold which Neil was perfectly happy with but I wanted this huge size of these particular bottles or I've actually been buying lots of this type of coffee in various different sizes because I've got our they used to do it in a very tiny flavoured one and that's the perfect size for our cat's ashes so I thought if, if the dogs go into the, just the bigger jars, so I've been buying them to save the jars to put the dog's ashes in. Which is sad, but it means that Neil gets a better class of coffee um, so that I can harvest the jars. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> and I got those. You can't buy that particular size, which is, um, what size is this? I can't see. Uh, it's a 400 gram jar and you can't get these in supermarkets at the moment I got those um, from Amazon and I think six of them are about 60 quid at the bottom here we've got some basically stuff that I can't fit anywhere else that's some um, gravy granules we're just trying some of the oh and there's uh, potato products as well so we've got um, powdered potato tinned potato and we just bought one of the Hubbard's gravy granules we've never tried it before so we thought we'd give it a go see how it is I tend to buy I like to buy the big if we use something a lot I'll get it in a catering size so that's the uh, we do like the Cajun spices so it's just so much cheaper to buy a decent sized one than the silly little packets that you get in the shops. Then we've got um, suet for dumplings. We've got um, stuffing, that's the word I'm looking for. So we've got Paxo and Sainsbury's own. Then I've got a section of soups. I'm not a lover of tin soup, but sometimes it's good to have it in the cupboard just in case. Then. The Campbell soup. Echo, can you come out of there, please? Out, come on. Good girl. Yeah, the, the Campbell's condensed soups are very good bases for for casseroles and things like that. Got a couple of the um, pasta sauce jars there. Again, bought a Hubbard's one just to see what it's like. It's much cheaper. So we just thought we'd see how we go with it. Then I've got some various um, pickle and I think that's, um, what's that down the bottom? Um, oh, sorry, my brain has completely gone. Um, sauerkraut, that's the word I was looking for. Sauerkraut and then I've got some various pickles going further back. next cubby is uh tin pulses to the left i've got a few vinegars and things that i've just had to shove in here because there's no room anywhere else so i've got 
um, chickpeas and black eye beans, tinned lentils, various different pulses, butter beans, kidney beans, that sort of thing. So kind of protein beans, as it were. And then a very, very depleted ve vegetable section. We, our vegetables all tend to be fresh or if we run out of fresh, then we'll go to the frozen section. So I very rarely buy or use tinned veg, but I thought it was one of my weak areas. So I really must need to start bulking up. So all I've got at the moment are tinned sweet corn and carrots. All the peas seem to have gone. Now I often say that I don't store things prepping wise if they have no nutritional value. And this is the section that is the exception to the rule. And that's because these are the flavours. You've got your stock cubes. Behind the stock cubes in, in this one is the tomato puree. Um, got various mustards and uh, condiment type things in that tray. Uh, some more different mustards on that one. Got some salad creams on the top there. And I've said before that we prefer the Sainsbury's own ketchup, which is true, we do. But there are three bottles of Heinz because they were going out of date and we got them really, really cheap. So I'll take it if it's cheap and we'll just have to make do. And it took me actually three days to rearrange all my food into some semblance of order. But having spent three days getting it all looking like this, I suddenly thought last night, there's a better way, a much better way to use this cupboard. So my next three days are going to be spent, I'm going to strip all of this out of the, cup, out of the cubbies. That unit's going. Then instead of being three across and four up, I'm going to turn it over so it's four across and three up and then i've got another unit upstairs that is just the four that will stand on top of it so it'll be it'll be kind of one section lower but then go two higher but i've got to miss out the gas meter so that would kind of work around the gas meter hopefully it will fit just under that shelf because we've got a gas pipe going through the shelf and you may wonder how that happened. <laughs> That's because my husband's a gas fitter and he just drilled a hole in the shelf and put the pipe through it without ever thinking if we're going to need to move it. So I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do. It may be just a case we'll have to unscrew it from its bracket and push it upwards if it's, um, if it's in the way. But we'll manage something. Then all this just stuff will be moved to somewhere else and then all this hopefully will just be lovely neat food storage section and Neil's now stood behind me Obviously. looking intently at where the gas pipe goes through the shelf yeah. He's obviously thinking. Well, I can't remember if I did it or whether the other, whether, another, whether the, uh, the council engineers did that. I have no idea, but somebody remember. drilled it. I think it was you, because you laid all the piping and then they just came in and... Connected it. Anyway, it doesn't matter who did it. It's like uh, it now. It's... We will find a way to do it. And I also have um, a strip light in here with a plug on it, but it means getting an extension lead out. But we have these wonderful LED lights that are rechargeable and I tend to leave them in here so that when I come out I can just press it on and I've got light in the cupboard without having to get out extension leads and things but of course we have to keep them all charged up so that if we've got a power cut we've got a, a source of light because this is how it is without any light so you can see enough but not perfect 
and um, just before I wrap up I just want to say that when I did the haul the other day I think I misled you a little bit because at the beginning of the haul which I said was a prepping haul and it was to a large extent but not everything that I got was prepping the first item that I showed you was loo roll and that's not something that I stockpile at all with loo roll I buy it as, as and when we need it and I had two packs because it's it's just a habit of mine with anything I'll pick up to because it just makes life easier and saves having to go back and the reason that I don't stop par loo roll is if you go back to the time of the great um, world shortage of toilet paper I thought to myself what would we do if we couldn't get any toilet paper and this is just me. The men, the men of the house didn't join in at all. They, they were just toilet paper fanatics and they weren't going to change that for anything. But I thought, I will see if I can live without toilet paper. Because let's face it, a lot of the world population right now today don't have flushing toilets, don't have toilet paper, and they cope. And our ancestors didn't have toilet paper, and they coped, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years people haven't used toilet paper and I am incredibly lucky in this house as, as I've said before Neil is a plumber and in the bathroom we have a bidet so if we use the loo in the bathroom we can then wash and my ensuite loo and the downstairs loo have both got toilet showers fitted if you go on Amazon and google toilet shower you'll see exactly what it is it's a small handheld shower that you can just use to wash so I stopped using paper and started using um, soap and water so I was actually a lot cleaner and not using paper which at the end of the day you're literally just throwing money down the toilet when you use toilet paper um, as a girl for drips I would just use um, flannels I picked up a load of um, well, I had old flannels in the house, which uh, I think the American audience will call them a washcloth. But in the UK, we call them flannels. And so I had a load anyway and, you know, use them for drips and then throw it in the wash with the towels and jobs are good. So like I say, I just needed to point out that those items weren't actually prepping items. Further on in that haul, there was also biscuits and chocolate. Neither of those are stockpiled. And for the simple reason that when I did try to stockpile biscuits back during lockdown, I started going to a warehouse, um, which was, it was a warehouse that um, serviced the restaurant industry. And because, of course, all the restaurants closed, all of a sudden they're, their business model had to change and so they opened it up to various members of the public and you had to go in and buy bulk orders of whatever it was so you couldn't buy um one of this or one of that it was you know a, a box of it in catering sizes and that suits me down to the ground anyway because that's what I would do anyway and I did get a box of hobnobs and also a box of um I think bourbons we had didn't we is it yeah, yeah, bourbons. Yeah, yeah. Bourbons, bourbons and hob hobnobs. Yeah. I think the hobnobs, the whole box, which was about 30 packs of hobnobs, lasted about a month. So I said never again. The amount of money that it cost me to buy them in the first place, although it was cheaper than the shops, you know, when there is an abundance of something, then people just have this idea that they can just go, go to it and eat as much as they want. And... and you have to ration these things and you have to be disciplined to not just keep eating and eating and eating if it has no nutritional value. So I I buy biscuits for use now, but not for stockpiling. And looking at what I've got here and a quick estimate between the, the tin food. Now, each of those tins will do Neil and I together one meal. So between the tin food, the pasta, the rice, 
and the things that I've got frozen, I'm estimating that I could feed Neil and I and the dogs for about 18 months. Um, we would probably, I mean, as, as happened during lockdown, we, di we did supplement with, um, with fresh fruit and veg because uh, our local um, farm started doing a drive-through fruit and veg service, didn't they? They did, which was really good. Yeah, that was a really good thing where you drive in, give your order over, was it over a speaker? Or well, how do we order no, the stuff? No, they, I can't remember there now. There was a person standing, there was a person, you were inside in the window. Yeah, we stayed was, in the car with the window down up. Back. And then you paid with a card and they had a card machine on a stick which they handed through to you. Yeah, but I can't remember how we told them what we wanted. Uh, I think we printed off a sheet at home and ticked off what, and then just handed the, Yeah, that's it. We could print off a sheet of, of what they had at home and then tick off what you wanted and then you held it up to the car window. Yeah. So they could actually read it through the car window. Yeah. It was quite expensive. It wasn't a cheap it way of buying cheap, things, but, but it meant we... that we had fresh fruit and veg yeah. during the lockdown meant, you period. You didn't have to go and have contact with people or walk around the shop or anything like that. So it Exactly, that you... yeah. So that worked for us then. But, you know, I'm trying to prep now for under the anticipation that that's not going to be happening in the future. But... It did mean that, you know, I have put my prepping to the, what's the word I'm looking for, Neil? I have, um, we've tested it out. Yes, it's not untested, is it? Yeah, my prepping isn't untested, it's, so. Um, what would you call it? Um, sorry, my brain has completely gone and it sounds like Neil's has as well. <laughs> There is a word that I can't think of, but anyway, I have tested my preps and my system and and not just during lockdown. Prior to that, we've had two occasions where we've suddenly found ourselves with no income for whatever reason. And then rather than have to um, go to um, food banks and things, there was never a need for that because we always had more than enough indoors to keep ourselves going over those two rough periods until we got our income back again. So anyway, that, that's really today's little video. Hope you enjoy it. Because um, I always like to see what other people have got in their pantries and see if I can get any ideas from them. So I hope that gave you some ideas. And this is a Calax unit, an IKEA Calax unit, which I find actually really good for to use. As, they're strong, so you can it carries quite a lot of weight, especially in the tin section. And it means that you can separate things out quite well. So once I have stripped all of this out, put in the other one on top, I will bring you back for another look. But anyway, for today... Don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a comment down below. Okay, lots of love. Bye.